Hey everyone and welcome back to another video on Lumber Capital Log Yard and there are a lot of logs in this yard so today we just got in a new load that we have to get scaled and so I'm just going to kind of be just walking you through the process here of what we do when a load of logs comes in so let's go ahead and get into this video. We have a pretty decent sized load of hemlock logs in that we're going to be scaling today and they should all be laid out so that all the same lengths are together. If I'm just going to guess here it looks like these are probably 12 footers, these look like 8 footers, uh, these kind of look like 10s and then maybe some long ones on the end but when the log truck comes in he is supposed to lay them all down so that the lengths are all together but on top of that he's also supposed to make sure that the tapered ends are all um, together on the same side and I forgot to mention this in a previous video of mine but it's very crucial when you are scaling to scale the smaller end because if you think about laying a log up on your mill and basing what you're going to get out of it off of the larger side you're not going to get anywhere near that so it's very important that you scale the smaller end and if you if when you're laying the logs down the uh, truck driver doesn't lay them all down with the smaller ends um, on the same side you'll never find which is the smaller end when you go to scale it's so challenging um, just because of the way that they're laid down if they're laid all out flat which you can if you have a lot of space you can do it that way it's not as big of a deal it's easier to find which side is the bigger side uh, or smaller side to scale but uh, when they're stacked like this really freaking challenging so have to make sure that they're very organized and usually they do a pretty good job at this but it's also our job today as we're scaling to just double check that everything is in the right order so we don't scale something wrong. So we will need a few tools for today. Our scale stick, of course. We use Scribner, as I've already mentioned in previous videos. You want to use whatever scale stick uh, the other people in your area are using because depending, the numbers will be a little different and you don't want anybody to think there's foul play going on or you purposely cheated them out of their money or anything like that. So you want to use the same scale stick as everyone around you um, and other loggers are certainly using. So in our area, every Everyone uses the Scribner uh, scale stick, so that's the one that we're going to be using for today. Uh, we also have spray paint. We need spray paint because we actually write the number on the logs. That way there's kind of proof of the number that we got and it's not just, you know, kind of like a number that's kind of just floating around. You know, there's proof. So if there's any questioning, we can take people down to the logs, say, look, this is you know the numbers that we got for each log tell them why we got the number we have skill stick here that way everything is just clear and concise for everyone i also have a tape measure with me today because we're going to be double checking all the lengths of these logs we don't want to get the wrong length on accident because there is a big difference in the board footage number depending on the length and we're also going to be writing it down because we have to add all of it up um, at, in, at the end here so let's go ahead and get to it here we're going to well i'll start off by measuring it, the, these logs here you can tell that they're all the same length because they're laid out pretty nicely and this tape measure is special too because it actually pokes into the log a little bit and this is indeed a 12 footer so we can go ahead and start scaling these 12 foot logs So I'm going to find my 12 on the scaling stick. There it is. We're just going to hook it on and looks like it has about 160 board feet in it. Right there you can see you always want to measure to the inside of the bark. Another thing that we want to watch for is any defects in the log. This is actually a beautiful log. It does not appear to have any shake but I am going to check the other end 
for any defects here and the other side is beautiful so i'm not taking anything off for this log it's nice and straight so it has 160. Now we're on to this log, but you can see here, this one does actually have a little bit of shake. I have to go and check the other side there, but you can see the little uh, cracks uh, around the ring there. I'm just gonna walk uh, over to the other end and make sure that there isn't shake on the other end too, because there can be. And I've noticed on logs that have shake on both sides, it's generally a pretty bad log. And this actually does have shake, two rings of shake on this end. Come take a look at this. Now that we're over here, I'm seeing a lot of logs with little cracks here. These trees must have came from a really just high stress area. You can see two, uh, two rings around that that are little cracks. This one has it too. Um, that one looks good. This one, a little bit, not terrible. Those are those two are butt logs. Butt logs are generally nicer logs. All right, so it does look like this would fall under 119, but I'm going to take off an inch for the shake on, on both sides. And it's also not a perfectly round log. If I were to measure it like this, I get more like of a 107 than a 119. So because of the shake, uh, also I'm going to just put this as 107. This one comes to 180 and you know, if she ain't 180, she ain't a lady. At least that's always what my brother used to say, but it does have severe shake. So looks like we're gonna be marking it down a little bit. Um, it's actually a really bad shake. And if you remember from the other end, this log had shake on both ends. So we're taking her down. She ain't 180, okay? She's pushing 160 more like it. There are also other things that you want to account for when you are scaling for one if it is at any way bowed so if it is if it does have a curve in it enough that you could take off one inch and that just takes kind of like looking down the side of it and really eyeing it like is that a full inch that it uh, dips or not um, and if it is then you're going to definitely want to take off for that because bowed logs are not nearly the quality uh, product that a straight log is not that you can't yield something out of it or that it's not worth cutting but you certainly don't want to pay full price for a log that isn't worth that so moving on to other logs here let me just take a look at what we've got I mean that one looks like a pine log. These are all pine right here. So it looks like this is the end of um, this load and you can see some a little bit more shake right there. That one has a crotch in it. I don't really get that. Logs should not have crotches, but I'm just being kind of hard on this load here. I mean, a lot of these uh, trees are actually beautiful. All of these look beautiful. Of course, I will have to look at the other end, but those all look like good solid logs and straight too. We're here now on the other end of the logs and these all look pretty good. Uh, this one does look like it has a little bit of shake. It's really hard when they're in piles like this to uh, find, pinpoint this log on the other side, to scale it. And that's why it's so important that it's laid out nicely. And, but uh, I mean, a lot of these, I mean, all of these are good ones. None of them look like they are um, bad or have any defects and they all look pretty straight too. Once again, it's hard to tell in this pile, but they're all, I mean, this pile is laid pretty nicely, so they can't be too bowed.
We've pretty much got it all scaled, except for this last log right here, the one with the crotch in it. And you can't cut dimensional lumber out of a log like this. Uh, that's just not a good log for what we do. So the, we have a few options, but I think what we're going to do is we're just going to actually scale this like it was an eight foot log instead of a 10. And then what we'll do is we'll cut two feet off of it. And that should be enough to get the crotch out of it. Uh, because the other end is just fine. It's a perfectly great log, except it is only 10 feet long and it has a crotch in it and we don't really inventory anything under 10 foot. So this is a little bit of a disappointment log for us, but we can still make some use out of eight foot logs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to scale it as though it was an eight foot log. That way we're not pay paying for the crotch that we uh, cannot cut lumber out of. So if I do it like this, it's 106. If I do it the long ways, it's more like 152. So I'm going to do the in-between measurement, which would be like one, uh, 120, I think what I'll do it at, and that's for an eight foot. The next step is to then record all of the numbers. So now we have to go through and write down every single number um, on this uh, notebook here. And then in the end, we're going to add it all up and see how many board feet was in this load. Now that I have all of the numbers down, I can go and add it up and that will find that the total board footage in this load and then we can multiply it by how much we pay for per board foot for the hemlock. That way we'll find how much we owe for this load. That's it for today's video, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. But other than that, I'll see you back here next time.